KMTV Action 3 News Weekend starts now. It's Sunday, and here in America, that means it's time for football. But on this day 15 years ago, the world was shaken. Towers crumbled, thousands of our fellow Americans lost their lives. Our nation and the whole world mourned as one. The National Football League commemorated the 15th anniversary of September 11th, 2001 during its games to date. And here in Omaha, people came together to reflect and unite. Good evening, I'm Nick Starling. Today is the 15th anniversary of September 11th. There were several ceremonies across the city honoring the nearly 3,000 lives that were lost on that day. One ceremony was at Stinson Park where Miranda Christian was at this morning. Oh, say can you see? Dozens gathered at Stinson Park Sunday morning to remember 9-11. We all remember what we were doing the day it happened, and we think it's a very important date for our country. When the clock hit 9-11 a.m., the crowd stood for one minute of silence. The ceremony was all about remembering those who died that day and honoring our first responders who work for us today. It still bothers me to see the video of the planes and try not to think about all that too much. Every 9-11 cents, I guarantee you, somebody will drop cookies or something off at the station. Well, there's pride in there. Emotions don't get any easier with each passing year. And, I gladly stand up. and for some in the crowd, they weren't even born yet or were too young to remember 9-11. We were listening to everyone talk about 9-11, talking about how important it is to everyone that died. We just kind of prayed for the people that did die. You try and do your best to sympathize and feel with the people that were there or that witnessed it and all that, so you actually have an accurate representation of Alec Rome says he came out to show his support for America. And while the scars from the attacks will always be there, ceremonies like this show the unity in our country. While it was a very tragic event, it also shows American unity. I think it shows how we as a people and as a country can come together and unite uh, for a common goal and while there are many things that divide us in this country all across the board, uh, at the end of the day we can all come together. In Omaha, Miranda Christian, KMTV Action 3 News. An artifact from the World Trade Center is on display at Memorial Park. The Irvington Fire Department brought this steel beam artifact from the World Trade Centers. It's been traveling around the area for the past few days for Nebraskans to see up close in person. Many people stopped by this morning to take a look at this piece of history to remember 9-11. It amazes me looking at this artifact. You look at the steel and the concrete and you think about this little bitty piece. You think about those giant towers. And you go, wow, it's just, it's hard to fathom the destruction and everything. Jopinski says this tragedy didn't break us apart, but brought us together. They also said since we are in the Midwest, it's nice to see these artifacts brought here to show. There's another ceremony going on in less than a half hour to remember our armed forces. Dozens of veterans, first responders, and the governor are on their way to Papillion to, for the military salute to 9-11. Reporter Joe Kara caught up with an American Legion motorcycle post helping set up the event. Joe. Yeah, about a dozen motorcycle riders from the Post 1 American Legion post in Omaha rode in on their motorcycles. They're just among dozens of people out here. You can see over my left shoulder that there are probably over 100 people who have already come in. And this is the 15th year to the day that planes flew into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon on September 11th. And emotions are high among veterans and a variety of volunteers out here. We've seen a number of fire trucks, first responders, and just general people who are patriotic to be here today. And for many, September 11th brings back the memories, feelings, and emotions from the day hijacked jetliners crashed into the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. It's been 15 years since that day, and in about a half hour, a military salute to those who lost their lives will commence here in the Sumter Amphitheater in Papillion. As we were talking with volunteers setting up for the military tribute, Army veteran R.C. Bammer says he remembers watching Air Force One fly through the air on the day of the attacks. He says he remembers seeing Air Force One fly through the air after seeing the attacks on TV. 
you know, the sight of those buildings coming down and, and the number of people that sacrificed their lives uh, that day and, and on, um, it's, it, it's tugs at your heart. Uh, As you can see, there's a giant American flag and a trail of American flags, much smaller as people cycle into Sumter Amphitheater, but that American flag is quite the sight. It's being lifted there at the military salute here. That'll begin in about 20, 25 minutes. The governor will be out here. Reporting live, Joe Kadat, KMTV Action 3 News. All right, thank you, Joe. The CNET Memorial Park is chilling today. 3,000 flags representing those who lost their lives this fateful day 15 years ago wave in silence. Each flag has the names of those who died and where. Victims with ties to Nebraska have a special circle. We caught up with a retired firefighter reflecting on how 9-11 changed the world as he once knew it. It's really kind of surreal. It doesn't it kind of seems just like, for me, it just seems like yesterday because it's, you know, from my profession, it's, it's, it's changed everything. It's, it changed the way we, we think, the way we train, the way we respond. The flags will remain in place through September 13th. Honor and Remember is an organization dedicated to remembering those who lost their lives serving our country. Today, they're sponsoring a September 11th walk thanking local heroes along the way. Reporter Jessica Ritchie has the story. This day will always be forever etched in my heart. Pat Barachek lost her son Corey in Iraq in 2004. Corey decided to re-up re in the Army after 9-11 because he said this is what I was trained to do. Um, they, my country needs me. An IED took the lives of Corey and two other soldiers only eight days into his first overseas tour. I think Corey would say never forget me, never forget all the guys, never forget those on 9-11. Always remember us. Today a hearty group of Nebraskans did that with a 26.2 mile marathon walk from Waterloo to downtown Omaha. We're saying thank you to all those families and the fallen soldiers who gave us the right to have those freedoms. That should be remembered and honored. Jim Meyer, director of the Nebraska Chapter of Honor and Remember, organized today's walk in honor of fallen first responders and servicemen throughout our nation's history. 1.3 million steps for 1.3 million fallen heroes. Participants traveled along Pacific Street carrying the American and Honor and Remember flags and stopping at Omaha fire stations. People thanking us, hugging us. Uh, we've got some roses too that were brought by. So we really appreciate the community support. Kelly Hayworth and her family went for their own walk today and decided to pay Engine 56 a surprise visit. We decided to thank them for their service and um, see a little bit about what they go through. Thank you, Vitals. I don't think they ever get thanked enough, and so we're quite happy to come here and tell them thank you. Jessica Ritchie, KMTV Action 3 News. The marathon walk also took flags through Memorial Park and Midtown Crossing before stopping at OPD and OFD headquarters. It ended at 5.30 with a remembrance ceremony at Heartland of America Park. If you're still looking for events going on today, and there's a lot of them, you can find a list on our website, kmtv.com. Well, we have an update to a story we first brought you last night. One person is dead and another book for vehicular homicide following a serious wreck. Police and emergency crews responded to the crash at 120th and I Streets after 7 o'clock Saturday night. They say a black Lincoln that was hired by passengers was struck by an eastbound red truck that ran a red light. 88-year-old Everett Severson was one of the three people in the Lincoln. He died at the hospital. The driver of the pickup, 53-year-old Kenneth Williams Jr., is booked for felony motor vehicle homicide. Police believe he was under the influence of alcohol and drugs. Well, 25 Benson High JROTC cadets are looking for your help getting them to Hawaii to represent Nebraska in a Pearl Harbor commemoration. The group held a bolathon at the Mark in Elkhorn to raise money for the trip. They still need about $27,000 to reach their $75,000 goal. One lucky cadet got a special donation a day from the Omaha Schools Foundation. Marcina Williams will now get to go to Hawaii with the rest of the group thanks to the surprise scholarship. I was really shocked when he presented it to me. It, it's a real growth experience for them and something that they will carry with them throughout their lives. There's no question in my mind. Benson's JROTC will march in a Pearl Harbor Anniversary Day Parade December 7th. 
Well, it's a chance for doctors to catch up with the babies they helped get better. Today at Children's Hospital, dozens of families brought their babies to their doctors while at the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, or NICU, to catch up with these potentially life-saving doctors. One of them described this reunion as something that's special and rewarding. It's a really a day that we look forward to. We kind of think who are the families we're going to see. We're going to see, we think about some of the kids who struggled a lot, and we're really happy to see them now getting older and bigger and stronger. One of the moms describes Nick Yu as a home away from home, so it's great to see the doctors again. Well, the American Cancer Society announces it will break ground later this month on an $11.5 million housing facility. The building will be for people and their families traveling to Omaha for cancer treatment. The Hope Lodge, Nebraska will be located off Dodge Street near the Nebraska Methodist Hospital system. Lodging there will be free of charge for those traveling more than 40 miles for treatment. Well, trouble on the campaign trail as Hillary Clinton is seen stumbling from a medical ailment. We'll tell you what happened along with more on the race to the Oval Office next. And a beautiful day today with tons of sunshine around, but that sunny conditions are about to be replaced with clouds and the chance for rain. I'll show you when the next round of activity will be moving into the area. OSI, your source for Nebraska sports, brings you 90 minutes of Husker highlights tonight on KMTV3. It all starts with Adam Kruger and Ben Stevens on Omaha Sports Insider Sunday, followed by the inside scoop on the Husker game on the Bank of the West football show. Then, Inside Nebraska, with Greg Sharp and Coach Riley, offers exclusive access and behind-the-scenes coverage. Join us tonight, following Action 3 News at 10 on KMTV. OSI, your Husker sports source. Hey, take your brother's sock out of your mouth. Green means go. I got it. Green means go. Uh-oh, better get Mako. Come in today and take advantage of our $99 bumper special after a $50 mail-in rebate. Mako, America's body shop. When people depend on you, you can depend on this. And with America's longest lasting pickups, you're always ready to lend a hand, clear the way, and carry the weight with load leveling rear air suspension so you can get there first and stay till the end. Get the power of lasting performance now during Ram Power Days. Now get 20% off MSRP cash allowance on select 2016 Ram 1500 models in dealer stock. This is Dylan and this is Levi. This is Dylan and this is Levi. Easy going but hard to tell apart. These parallel preschoolers were born with a double dose of heart trouble. Just hours old, they came to Children's Hospital and Medical Center, the best place for kids, where comprehensive cardiac expertise and state-of-the-art techniques are a twinning combination. Right, Dylan? Right, Levi? Nailed it. Children's Hospital and Medical Center. We know children. Hey, take your brother's sock out of your mouth. Green means go. I got it. Green means go. Uh-oh, better get Mako. Come in today and take advantage of our $99 bumper special after a $50 mail-in rebate. Mako, America's body shop. North Omaha, thanks for watching KMTV3. Hillary Clinton's doctor says she was diagnosed Friday with pneumonia, put on antibiotics, and advised the rest to modify her campaign schedule. But today she suffered what appeared to be a near fainting spell while leaving the 9-11 ceremony at Ground Zero. She said she was doing well a couple hours later. CBS News correspondent Jamie Yukas reports from New York City. Video posted on social media shows Hillary Clinton's aides tightly holding on to her just before she falters a couple times and stumbles into her van. Clinton had been attending the ceremony at Ground Zero to mark the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Before it began, Clinton exchanged hugs with others attending the observance. Clinton only attended an hour and a half of the ceremony held here in Lower Manhattan. A campaign spokesperson said she became overheated and left to go to her daughter Chelsea's nearby apartment. Clinton left the apartment building a short time later. Feeling great. Feeling great. It's unknown if Clinton required medical attention. Donald Trump also attended the ceremony. He told reporters he didn't know anything about Clinton's health incident. But Trump's supporters have long questioned the 68-year-old's health and stamina. Clinton has maintained she is healthy and has no major health concerns. 
Less than nine weeks before the election, the gap between the two presidential candidates has gotten smaller in some battleground states. According to the CBS News Battleground Tracker, Clinton is now up by two points in Florida, falling from five points. In all of the battleground states, Clinton holds just a 1% lead among likely voters. Both candidates have scheduled events Monday. Clinton has planned fundraisers in San Francisco, and Trump is scheduled to speak in Baltimore and Asheville, North Carolina. Jamie Ukas, CBS News, New York. And joining us now is meteorologist Jennifer Zeppelin. And Jennifer, there's a lot of people outside today. Perfect weather to, for all those events. It is just absolutely beautiful outside. I wish we could just bottle this up because we have more changes. Just oh, in no. time from Monday into Tuesday. <laughs> Chance for rain and we'll be moving back in again. Not the case right now. Pretty quiet and dry. It's been a little bit breezy outside. Those south winds helping to warm our afternoon highs into the 80s, but area wide rain free. Storm system though is still back to the north and west of us, so it is moving through Montana. This is our next rainmaker and it will be arriving late tomorrow night and throughout the day on Tuesday, increasing our chances for showers and thunderstorms. So what's the latest timeline? What do you need to know? Well, the next three things over the next 24 Four hours is that we are looking at an increased chance for some showers and thunderstorm activity. I think majority of the moisture is going to hold off until Tuesday. So for most of the day tomorrow, dry day, still some breezy south winds, and we will start to see that humidity level increasing. Rain totals as this next round moves through about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. There is a marginal risk that some of these storms could become strong, maybe even isolated severe storm development. Hail gusty winds would be our main concern, and it looks like the majority of the moisture precipitation will be moving through throughout the day on Thursday with improving conditions by late Tuesday evening. Gorgeous outside right now, 80 degrees. This is at our Harris Casino cam, and as Nick was saying, Perfect evening to be able to enjoy outdoor activities. Hopefully you've got uh, some plans to maybe walk the dog, go to the park, or even do a little grilling. Winds, though, are from the south, about 22 miles an hour. Nothing in the rain gauges, and that's the way it's going to stay for tonight. Area-wide temperatures in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees, and that is exactly where we should be for this time of year. Around the metro, we have 79 in Elkhorn. Willow Springs is sitting at 80 degrees. As far as the next few hours, temperatures will slowly start to drop off, but it's going to be a little warmer start to your day on Monday. 76 at 7 p.m. We hold with those 70s through 9 o'clock. Mostly clear skies and breezy south winds. What can we expect during the overnight hours early tomorrow morning as you get ready to head to work and school? Temperature wise, we're looking at low 60s. Few clouds starting to move through, increasing towards the afternoon as the front gets a little bit closer. But notice that right now our current model is showing no rain. And I think, again, a large portion of it's going to hold off until the overnight hours into Tuesday. 62 is where we start the day off in the morning. Breezy conditions still expected for the remainder of this evening. Tomorrow, increasing clouds. I'm going to go with a high of 84 degrees with that wind sort of uh, continuing to remain from the south about 10 to 20 miles an hour. Better chance Chances for some showers and thunderstorms across the area on Tuesday. We definitely cool things off with the passage of that front 69. Gorgeous day on Wednesday with a high of 71 degrees. And then another system moves in Thursday and Friday. Looks like it could be a very active couple of days for us, especially uh, throughout the day on Friday. And this could be a heavier rainmaker for us. Some of the models right now putting out maybe close to an inch for that next system Thursday and Friday. And as you can tell, boy, check out Saturday. Just in time, it looks like that system will move out possibly even before the high school games. As we look at uh, late Friday into Saturday, we're looking at uh, gorgeous conditions just in time for the Huskers game. Nick. All right, thank you, Jennifer. A new report shows global air passenger traffic increased nearly 6.5 in 2015. That's the biggest gain since 2010. Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson was ranked the world's busiest airport with more than 100 million passengers passing through it last year, following by Beijing, China. Chicago's O'Hare Airport came in fourth. Well, Carl Eichen, the billionaire owner of Trump Taj Mahal Casino, wants to shut it down. His team has filed a petition asking regulators to approve the casino's closure effective October 10th, but wants to start winding down some tables later this month. Eichen says the casino has lost millions a month while casinos were going to strike against it. And Donald Trump's childhood home is going up for auction next month. Newsday reports says the opening bid for the presidential nominee's first home in Queens is $849,000. The owners of the 3,600-square-foot, five-bedroom Tudor says they want to see what it's worth. 
Well, up next in sports, the NFL regular season is in full swing today as the Chiefs try to start the year with a win. Adam Kruger has the highlights after the break. It's fall. Time to get focused, gear up, and get ready so that this year can be your booner year. Cabela's Fall Great Outdoor Days, our largest sale and event of the season. Get $130 off a Bushnell Rangefinder and Binocular Combo. In-store and online now. This is the last place you'd expect us to talk about staying connected with state-of-the-art technology. Or wow you with a massive touch screen. Then again, you probably didn't think you'd need your survival skills back on the road either. Jeep Cherokee, conquer all the world's most challenging places. Celebrating 75 years of the most awarded SUV lineup ever. Or during the Jeep Celebration event, get 20% off MSRP cash allowance on select 2016 Jeep Cherokee models in dealer stock. Adventure Bay is still open weekends through September 5th, along with all of Adventureland Park's rides, shows, and attractions, including the Monster, our new steel roller coaster. Don't let summer slip away. Plan your visit today. It's all included with your admission to Adventureland. Come on over to Adventureland. You're going to love it at Adventureland. Glenwood, thanks for watching KMTV3. Join CHI Health for an inspiring 30-day walking program. Sidewalk Marathon starts September 12th. Sign up at chihealth.com slash sidewalk marathon. The September sales event is on at Ashley Ford. During SUV season, drive the 2017 Escape for just $198 a month or get a new F-150 Super Crew for only $289 per month. Choose from hundreds of new SUVs and trucks. Then compare and save at Ashley Ford or AshleyFord.com. Griswold. Thanks for watching KMTV3. Now, your Omaha Sports Insider Report. 15 years ago on this date, millions of Americans came together in response to the worst terrorist attack in our country's history. Today, millions of others came together to remember those who lost their lives and to celebrate the USA's most watched sport, the NFL. The Chiefs hosting the Chargers at Arrowhead Stadium today. We pick it up in the second quarter. San Diego up 14-3. Phillip Rivers finds North Platte native Danny Woodhead for the 4-yard touchdown. Chargers would lead 24-3. Late in the third quarter, but in the fourth, KC rallies. Alex Smith back to pass, finds Jeremy Macklin for the 19-yard touchdown. Chiefs within 10 at that point. Just over a minute remaining now in the fourth. KC down seven. Spencer Ware runs it in from five yards out. The game tied at 27, and we go to overtime. Chiefs get the ball first in OT and take advantage. Alex Smith on the option keep gets over the goal line for the touchdown as the Chiefs mount their largest comeback in team history to win it. 33 to 27 in overtime. Meanwhile, the Packers making the trip down to Florida to face the Jags. Late second quarter, Green Bay down three until Aaron Rodgers finds Devontae Adams for the 29 yard score. Packers never trail after that. They win it today, 27 to 23. The Bears opening their season on the road in Houston today. Late second quarter, Texans up three until Chicago's Jay Cutler finds Eddie Royal for the 19 yard touchdown. Bears go up at the half, 14 to 10. In the third, Houston now down one. Brock Osweiler finds Will Fuller, who does the rest, goes 18 yards for the touchdown. Texans go on for the victory today, 23 to 14. Meanwhile, the Vikings visiting the Titans in their season opener, third quarter. Minnesota down for the Vikings. Eric Kendricks comes up with the interception. He's going the other way, 77 yards for the touchdown. Minnesota goes on top, 12 to 10. Fourth quarter, more from the Vikings defense. The Titans once again. Turning it over, the fumble, Minnesota's Daniil Hunter picks it up and goes the other way, 24 yards for the score. Vikings take it, 25-16. to 16. Meanwhile, the Huskers are now 2-0 after a 52-17 win over Wyoming yesterday. But what many media members and probably fans were talking about afterwards, Nebraska's next opponent. Oregon heads into Memorial Stadium next week to take on the Big Red. As NU avoided looking ahead to the Ducks with a 35-point victory on Saturday. And now with two wins in the books, the Huskers can now turn their focus the to the Quack Attack. Well, I think it's great uh, to be 2-0 for sure to go into this game. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting time. You know, the one thing about it, the more you win, the more exciting the next game gets. He's in. Touchdown, Nebraska. This is a big week for us uh, coming up. Um, you know, it's going to be hectic. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a lot of eyes on us. We just got to make sure we stay focused. 
you know, this is going to be a big task for us. Uh, we're, I think we're ready for it. The Huskers game against the Ducks starts at 2.30 next Saturday. Oregon is ranked 22nd in the latest AP poll released today. That's two spots up from the Ducks were ranked last week. Nebraska is still not in the top 25. The Huskers, though, are receiving votes. Alabama is still number one in the country. Five Big Ten teams are in the rankings led by, by Ohio State at number three. And you can access Omaha Sports Insider 24 hours a day, seven days a week at omahasportsinsider.com. Powered by KMTV3 and AM590 ESPN Omaha. Join the women of KMTV3 and Star 104.5 for the 23rd annual Komen Race for the Cure, Sunday, October 9th. It's a great run for a great cause. Help us as we fight to beat breast cancer. The event will be held at the Baxter Arena, 67th and Center, just across from McSarvin Village. Register now for the 23rd annual Komen Nebraska Race for the Cure. Join us Sunday, October 9th at Baxter Arena and Exarban Village. Go to KMTV.com for details. The Race. Real talk about politics from all sides. Following the ups and downs of this battle for the White House. The issues that matter and where the candidates really stand. Sunday morning at 7 on KMTV3. The Bottom Line, Omaha's first internet-only sports talk show. Now on AM 590 ESPN Omaha. Catch two more hours of local sports news and entertainment. Hosted by Michael Severe. Weekdays noon to 2 on AM 590 ESPN Omaha. It's rodeo time. Gather up the family and bring your friends to Century Link Center September 23rd and 4th at 7.30 as Xyron Foundation presents the Cinch World's Toughest Rodeo. Friday night, kids get a free cowboy hat and half-price admission count limits of KMTV3. Witness the best in rodeo action and whiplash the cowboy monkey. Tickets are family priced at Ticketmaster.com. September 23rd and 4th. We'll see you at the rodeo. People aren't born champions, they're taught. They're listened to, they're heard, they're given smiles and words of encouragement. They're shown support, guidance, time, they're believed in. I'm so grateful for the mentors I've had, for those who believed in me and encouraged me from the very beginning. Learn how you can become a champion in a young person's life at teammates.org. My name is Tom Osborne, retired coach, and I mentor, will you? Beautiful day today, but we do have some changes moving in late tomorrow night into Tuesday. So it's a great reminder to download Storm Shield so you know when severe thunderstorm warnings are issued for the area. The cold front will be arriving late tomorrow night. All right, thank you for joining us at 530. We'll see you back here at 10. Have a good evening. We know you have many choices for news.